Hello, it's Sally here from Dotty B. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to be making a needle case. Um, we had a little poll on the Facebook group and um, we had a choice of um, the needle case or Easter bunting. So the needle case is one, so um, that's what we're doing. So um, I just wanted to show you um, a little case that I made um, last year. Um, I just wanted something small. I have got um, bigger needle cases, but they're quite bulky and I kind of I'm search I'm always searching for the right needle in amongst all the other needles. So I just wanted something really simple that I could just have my favourite needles in that I use time and time again and I don't have to go searching. So that's what this little case is. Um it's just two pieces of fabric um sewn together and then a piece of felt put in the middle. Um, if you're sewing along with this, then you can, you know, it, it really is um, adaptable and you can do as many little inserts as you want. You can make this bigger. Um, it's entirely up to you how it suits your needs. This was specifically um, what I wanted for my for my sewing needs. So um, that's what I did. So this is kind of what well, I'm going. I'm going to make another one of these um, cause, because they're so handy. And um, sometimes I'm working on two projects at the same time and I've got two um two work boxes um i've got um what i do is I, I have a little tin um and i keep all of my bits in that um I'm, i need for every project um there are things in here that stay in here and then i just add the threads and whatnot specifically for that project so this is just kind of like to throw in to one of my work boxes um so you know i've got this handy all the time and i can you know it's uh, i've got everything there i need for my projects so this is what we're going to be making. Um, right, I've gathered together, oh, the, the one I'm going to make is going to be blue and white this time. So I've gone for pinks this one, pinks and greens, but this one's going to be blue, blue and cream. So um, I have selected my fabrics and I've got a, a, a blue and cream toile de joie, I think they're called. Um, I think that's how you say it. Um, and also a florally stripe. I um, thought they kind of, they go quite nicely and then a little bit of cream felt. So um, those were my fabrics. I'm just gonna pop those out of the way and show you um, the sizes of this. If you want to make one of these in this particular size, um, the size I have um, cut my fabric is, I think I, yeah, six and a half inches by four, four and a half inches or centimetres, it's it's about 16, 16 centimetres by 11 centimetres. And my piece of felt, um, I did cut it out um, with normal scissors, but I have gone and um, just gone round the edge and used my pinking shears just to um, give it a decorative edge. You don't have to do that. You can just do it plain. It's up to you. Um, I did actually cut it 11 centimetres by... Um, it was about seven and a half, but then obviously it's a little bit smaller once you've you've gone round the edge with pink and shears. So they're, they're the pieces of fabric that I'm using. Um, but like I say, if you are wanting to um, make a bigger book, then you can do bigger sizes and have more leaves, like more leaves, leaves in there and whatnot to put your needles in and pins and whatnot. You might have different um, needs to what I, I have, but I'm just going to make a really simple one today. So they're my fabrics. Um, now, as I, that's going to be my front, this bit here and then back. Now you can also decorate the front if you want. I've just pulled out some trimmings and different, um, ah, I did, I, I did actually, when I did that, I did actually think, should I put a, a linen? That's what I pulled that out for, I just realised. I make a little linen page inside as well. I don't know, we'll see when we come to that. So yeah, I've, got, I've, I've pulled out some doilies anyway, because I was thinking of kind of decorating the front as well. I'm not sure about that one, but that's pretty, but that, that one's a little bit too bulky. You've got that one. Um, that one's quite nice. Either there or as a, as a... That one, I don't know. I've got this one here, which is really nice. 
I don't know. We'll see when we come to it, though. So I've got both. I've just got some little doilies anyway, just to see if I can add add to. Um, now on the front, I've also pulled out some like lacy bits and pieces. I just wondered whether something like that would be nice. I mean, I quite like that. That looks lovely, doesn't it? That kind of thing. I do like that. Um, got a little butterfly. I think we go on. I'm looking at this now because whatever goes onto the front cover, you need to sew that on first. Um, otherwise, you're going to be sewing through. You'll see your thre your, your stitches through the uh, once that's on. You'll see your stitches through it. So it's best if you're going to decorate your front cover to put it on before you actually sew it all together. So that's why I'm deciding what, if anything, got that as well. That's pretty, but it's quite bulky and it's kind of covering too much of the um of the thing here i've also got these oh, i've got a piece of lace as well which i quite like um and i've also got these here i bought these um a few weeks ago they're linen and they're monograms um so s for my name um and i thought maybe put one of these on i think they're actually they're actually sewn down these are i'm gonna just take one off this one i think this is the start of where it um Let's do let's cut it at the back. There we go. I'll take that one off. I thought these are so pretty. And then have one of those. I mean, I think I'm going to have one of those on it. So that's what I'm going to do for that. So I'm going to sew this on first before I start putting my needle case together. Oops, don't see. Drop my needle. Okay, so do I have it there? Do I have it in the corner? Just remember you've got um you've got a little hem on this, so don't go too far to the edge. Or central. I'm just covering that rose if I put it central, that's the only thing. But does it matter? No, I don't think it does. I'm going to do it central. So that's about central. And I'm just going to grab a pin. Apologies for any noise that you can hear in the background. It's um, it's a Saturday morning here. We've got all the family. So there'll be lots of background noise, I should think. Can't keep them quiet. Right, I'm not going to pin it because I've just pinned it and I can see the holes and they're not going back. So I'm not going to pin it. I'm going to try and get it on without pinning it. So that's about central. So let's, what I'm going to do is there's little holes in this. So I'm just going to go around and try and catch the holes. Try that again. I hope you're all well. Are you finding time to stitch today or this weekend? It's a beautiful sunny day here in the Midlands of England, in Leicestershire. It's, yeah, beautiful sunny day today able to pick my washing out and hopefully get it dry.
all the flowers are in the garden are all blooming. We've got daffodils and primulas and I can see some uh, grape hyacinths out. Beautiful colour. What else can I see? I know we've got loads of daffodils down the garden, but um, we've got a lot of um, trees and bushes and stuff, so I can't see any more at the moment, but um, the birds are out. The birds have been singing outside. Yeah, spring has sprung, I think it's safe to say. After such a wet, a wet spring, um, wet winter had it's not it doesn't seem as though it stopped raining i mean it was raining yesterday but um it would be nice for the ground to dry out a little bit now because i do um the antiques and vintage shop as well i haven't been able to get out to go to the car boots and the flea markets and antique markets and stuff most of them are usually held outside especially the car boot sales um and they've just all been cancelled just you know well they've been closed over winter um but um march is usually when they all kind of open up again um they've not been open able to open up because the ground on the fields have just been so wet so um just waiting for those to open up so i can start restocking my little booth in the shop, I'm getting lots of goodies, both for the shop and for me <laughs> as well. So um, that's where I get a lot of my bits from. Someone else's trash is your treasure, is that right? Something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's my monograph zone on anyway. So I think it is, have I done? Oh, yes, I have done all of it. So I'm just going to tie that off. There we go. It's fairly straight. Yeah, it's straight, isn't it? Okay, so that's going to be my decoration for the front. So let me just pop all those other little decorations out of the way. And that's done. Right, so we can start um, to join it together. So right sides together and, <coughs> excuse me, um, I want, because you've got to sew all the way around but leave a gap for it to be turned out, I want my turning out to be here at the bottom back. Um, you can draw where you want to stitch, about half an inch, um, half cent, sorry, a quarter of an inch half centimeter you can draw round kind of where you want I just use a pencil you can use um, heat erasable pen but the pencil is not going to go through the fabric anyway so you can do that all the way around if you need a guide it's always good to have a guide otherwise it can go a bit crooked Right, I've got my thread. I'm going to start here. All I'm going to do is just back stitch all the way around now. Fairly small -ish stitches, but it don't have to be too precise. Nothing I do is ever too precise. On that, you can always be guaranteed. I hope you've all been keeping well. I've had a rotten cold this week. It's been awful. It started on, I think it started on Saturday afternoon last week, so a week ago. Felt just a little bit groggy. Nothing 
major, but just, you know, you get that feeling. You think, oh, my throat doesn't feel right. So anyway, Saturday, Sunday, I woke up, was not very well at all, which was Mother's Day here in the UK. Um, and we'd planned to get together, have, a, have Sunday lunch and whatnot. Some roast beef, roast beef, Yorkshire puddings, roast potatoes, you know, the works. Uh, my son and his fiance were coming round and um, they were they were making the pudding. I think it was a cheesecake. Um, my, my son's fiance, she's um, lactose intolerant. So she has made this um, cheesecake obviously to suit her dietary needs and whatnot. But my daughter, one of my daughters is also, well, both my daughters actually are lactose. Well, when they have milk, it doesn't agree with them. Cow's milk and cheese, it doesn't agree with them. But my, my youngest daughter, it's, she, she started to get um, quite bad stomach pains when she has it. So this is just recently in the last few weeks. So I said, well, why don't you try just cutting out dairy and see how you go and it seems to be working so i'm waffling a bit but it's kind of like so this cheesecake anyway is kind of specially made for them but um so it didn't get made in the end because we were all ill not just me there was my son and my other son and my husband we were all ill so we've had to count we had to cancel mother's day <laughs> we did we did see them they did pop over just to bring me some flowers and whatnot, a card, but um, if we cancelled the meal because we weren't feeling very well. So we've got that to look forward to tomorrow. So everyone's going around tomorrow and we're having a lovely roast dinner and this lovely cheesecake that's been made. So I'm just checking my fabrics because sometimes when you're sewing, they do kind of distort and stretch. And also I can see I've not kind of lined those up. Can you see? I've not kind of lined those up quite right. But it doesn't matter as long as I'm sewing. Along an edge that's straight, that will be okay. I'm just going to go in a tiny bit. If it's a bit smaller than this one, the other one, then I don't mind. It, They'll be roughly about the same, so I'm just going to do that as a guide to go round. <clears throat> so, yeah, can you hear that my throat's a bit croaky? I'm feeling much better now, um, but I've had this horrid cold. It's um, I've had cough and sneezes. My sinuses have gone up. I've been blocked and what, or whatever they do, sinuses do that, the pressure in my head so anyway i'm feeling much better now so i don't want to moan about <laughs> oh it's a bit negative isn't it moaning all about my cold but um i think it's because i've not had a cold for such a long time and then i've had a bad one so anyway i'm feeling much better now i'm raring to go with myself well i have been sewing but um just um quietly on an uh, on or catching up to film because I've got some filming to do from for some for some projects and also um, I'm trying to finish a project that I actually started um, when I was on holiday in July last year uh, it's it's one that I've not been filming in fact I don't even know where it is at the moment I was going to show you but um, Oh, I know where it is. It's here. If you're interested, you're probably not because this is a needle point, needle case tutorial. But yeah, this is my mermaid. So I'll just give you a quick show. But um, yeah, so I'm trying to finish this off at the moment. This is just one that I'm doing. Actually, I'll probably show you another time anyway. But that I'm trying to get that finished off because it's been around since July. I don't like having projects that I don't finish because so much work has gone into them that, you know, you want them to be finished, don't you? So um, I hang them up around my room. So, 
So I'm sure that one go, it will go up as soon as I've finished it. But there's not much left to do. I'm just going to finish this off here because I need some more thread. Just put some more thread on the needle. It's rolling away. Right, so what I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pause rather than you just sit watching me do this. Although hopefully you're, you're sewing along, that would be nice to think that you're sewing along as well and doing um, one, yeah, one, of, one, one for yourself, hopefully. So but I think I'm going to just pause and just get the rest of this sewing done and then come back when I've, I've gone all the way around. Okay, I'll see you in a moment. Right, so I've gone all the way around now. And I've just left a little gap. It's about about an inch, I think. Oh, just, just over an inch, an inch and a quarter. So about um, three centimetre gap. Just so that I can... It's probably a bit too small, actually, but I should, probably should have done it a little bit bigger. But um, just so that I can turn it inside out. And um, what I've done is I've just... Um, I've not on... I've not tied off my thread because I'm going to use that to sew it up. So all I've done is I've just kind of done a double... A double stitch here just to give it a little bit of strength while I turn it inside out um, just before I do that I'm just going to snip the corners so all I'm going to do is um, just go across each corner like that and I'm also just going to take a little bit of the excess fabric because um, the fabrics weren't lining up quite right I had to go in a little bit so I'm just going to make a neat a neat edge around just to get rid of a little bit of the excess fabric that we don't need I'm just going to do a little bit of this one, but I'm not going to do too much where we're turning in. I'm going to just leave that bit. Okay, so now we just need to turn it the right way around. Um, like I said, I've probably not left a big enough gap. I should have probably done maybe four centimetre gap. But it's got, it's going to come through. By hook or by crook, it will come through. Just need to be gentle with it, and um, there we go. Okay, it may need a little bit of a press, a bit of an iron, if it's a bit wrinkly. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to use gently use my pencil to just pull push out the corners. But do it gently, I'm sure. Fine like that, yep, that's fine. Not fine the hold. So if I just pop the pencil in like that. Again 
just do it, do it gently if you're doing it, if you, if you're doing it with a pencil or anything sharp um, because you don't want it to go through. Okay, so that is that. I've got my needle here and I've got my little gap there. So I'm just going to press it down for now, but you can iron it and get a sharper edge. And then all I'm going to do is just, I've got a little bit of a stray thread there, just tuck that in. Okay, I'm just going to go across. I'm going to go over that side. Then over to this side, a little stitch. Over to this side, a tiny little stitch. Do that, then you, you, your stitches are quite invisible ish, they're not too visible. Tiny little stitch either side, and then back over. We get to the other end. Okay, that's that done. And a tiny, tiny little knot. Might do one more actually. Like that. And then just pop your thread in and kind of take it over to the other side just so that you can pull it through and then you can snip that off. And that's the first part of your needle case done. So when it's folded over, that's how it's going to look. Like that. <laughs> it's not quite level. <laughs> it's, bism it's not centred. I should have gone over a little bit more. That's my fault for not thinking about that. But never mind. I'm not bothered. Okay, so flatten it out this way and we get our felt. So our felt's going to go in here like this. And then what I'm going to do is just fold it over and just find, finger press it so you can see. I'm just going to lay my needle there. You can just see the um, center. And again, with this, fold it over so you get your center and line them up like so and I'm just going to pop a couple of pins in just so I can see where I'm going I don't want to actually mark this with pencil or anything so you could do it with invisible pen you know the um, heat erasable pens that would be okay to do and then you can iron it off afterwards so again with um, some thread Oh, I was going to have a look at just, um, do we want to make this one simple or do we want to put um, another little page in it? A little bit of doily in it. It could go inside or it can go on the outside. How does that go? Because these are handmade, they're all, not always symmetrical. This one's got a little bit of... Um, staining on it but um i think it all adds to the what does it look like like i'm just thinking so what i might do is i could put that down there because if i did that somehow then my monogram wouldn't wouldn't look so out of place would it Okay, I should have thought about this before because, right, let's take these off. Because if I did that, then what would that do? No, because you still see it, wouldn't you? I should have put, what, sh uh, what I should have done before I sewed this up, I should have put this on and then I could, this would have gone into the, um, the little seam. So that's my first mistake. 
but what I could do is that I cut it off there and then that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to just cut this off here. That's going to go there. It's going to pin it. Okay, and then I'm going to carefully go round. I'm going to start here because I'm going to hide my knot underneath this somehow and I'm, go I'm going to try and just pick up this fabric not the one underneath so really gently just I think it's working I'm just picking up And then again on this side, all I'm going to do is try and pick up just this top fabric so it's not going through to the other side. To keep my stitches small and kind of unseen, what I'm doing is I'm taking a little tiny back stitch and then forward. Okay, and then you cannot you can't see the stitches as much. It's working. So when when you're doing yours, because I'm I'm making all the mistakes, it's help, hopefully it's helping you to plan yours a little bit better. Because if you wanted to do um, this lace, then it would probably be better to do it before the whole thing was sewn down. But um, if you've been watching my videos for a while, then you'll know that um, I I plan the end result but I don't plan too much about how I get to that end result. So you see the mistakes I make and hopefully that helps, helps um, because I think that's what sewing is all about, isn't it? It's just learning and experimenting and you do make mistakes and it's only natural, but, but everything can be, you know, rectified and sorted out and whatnot, and you can usually solve the problem that you've got. All right, so we're over to this side now. I'm just gonna have a stitch there. So we're about back at the beginning of this one, okay, 
and then I'm just going to work my way across here. Just doing some small stitches again. It's maybe a little bit more visible because I'm trying to make sure this gets attached properly. So you can see them, but um, not too bad. So this is probably going to look lovely as well. So if I hadn't have made the mistake of putting my monogram too far over, then I wouldn't have put the lace on and it wouldn't have looked so nice. So, so I think that's not too bad. So I'll just get this side done. Again, a tiny little back stitch and then go forward. And that kind of just gives you a really small stitch. To be honest, I'm using cream thread and this lace is a more of an off-white, so I should probably have used um, a bit more of a an off-white colour rather than the cream, but um, hey-ho, doesn't matter. Right. So ring down this side. Again, apologies if you can hear background noise. Um, I haven't got a door on my room, on my craft room, and it's quite open planned, this part of the house is, so um, I can hear someone in the kitchen. I think it's my daughter making her, I'll say breakfast, but <laughs> it's more, I think it's lunchtime actually. And my husband's in the garden and I can see him strimming the edges of the lawn so he's going to be mowing the lawn in a little while so you might hear that as well all noises of family life but that's I think that's one of the sounds of summer I think when someone's mowing the lawn kind of get reminded back to the summer again. Can't wait for the warmer weather when we can sit outside and we can sew outside. Not have to wrap up too warm because <laughs> it's been cold. Although I saw on the news the other, I think it was, I'm not sure whether it was last week or the week before, saying um, that it's been the warmest, I don't know whether they mean global or just in the UK, the warmest February um, for so many years. But um, it didn't feel like it was warm when um, we were going through it. But that's what they're saying. Right, I think I'm nearly there with the lace. Okay, I'm just going to do a tiny little knot to finish that off. And another. Okay, and then I'm just going to do again, just go in and then travel along a little bit. And back up and just snip that off. Okay, let's take that pin out. Okay, so. Oops, there we go. Yeah, I like that. It's so pretty. So, 
yeah love it and it looks nice inside as well so all i need now is my i don't think i'm going to put any extra leaves in because i know that i won't use them but i, I mean i am tempted to use that but now that i've got the lace on then i don't think it's necessary it's going to be too much so keep it nice and simple so that's going to go in there and i did <laughs> i did do all my folding but i'm gonna to have to do my folding again so that i can just about see where's my needle you can just about see the central line and again with this just quickly pinch it into place just pop those and then there well, i'm going to need my pins aren't i just to um I'll just pop a couple of pins in just so that I've got a bit of a guiding, a guiding line. That one. And the one. There we go. Something like that. So I can just about visualise it. I'm just going to get some more thread. So I'm going to thread again. Oops. I mean, you could do this on a sewing machine. Let's have a zip round with a sewing machine, but um, I actually like doing I like doing it hand sewn. I just feel more connected to the threads and the fabric and whatnot, and just the whole piece. If I know that everything has been, you know, I've made it with my own hands, and although you know, machine stitching is the same as well. You've made it with your own hands, but I just feel a little bit more connected to the items when it's like this. So I'm just going to go underneath um, the felt just to hide my knot. And then all I'm going to do again is back stitch. Um, keep your stitches quite neat, and I'll say that because it's going. This is going to go through onto that. Um, let me show you this one. So um, they have gone through, but I've tried, well, tried to keep it right neat. But they are a little bit off offline. But I don't I don't mind at all. That's hand stitching for you. It's not always perfect. So you could, I suppose you could do a running stitch all the way down and then back up again. And that will give you just running stitches both sides. If you were bothered about it, but I'm not bothered about it. And in fact, it will probably hide it a lot more because I've got lace on this one. So you probably won't even see them anyway. I'm just going to get rid of that pin now. And you can, did I say, I think I've already said that, you can draw a line if you wanted to. Keep straight. I'm going to try and keep straight. Take that pin out. all the way through hopefully I've not gone too off center I think that's okay Right, I'm just going to come back up here near to the underneath of the felt and just do a little knot or two 
as well. That's two. And then I'm just going to go up there and then just come down there and snip that. Okay, and that is your needle book done. So, we've got our little felt and that, turn it over and there we go. Okay, so that's it, it's all done. All that's left is grab my needle, just pop your needles in, and that's it. Easy peasy. I hope you enjoyed that. I have, and I've got a lovely little needle case. So that's the one that I had, and that's my new one. So, um, yeah, I will put a set of needles in here. So I've got two. <laughs> And I'll have them, um, so when I've got two projects on the go, I've got a needle case for each, so that's great. So um, you can just press these if it's not quite quite right, but I think as you're using it, it will get softer and it will be fine. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, if you are um, following along and you're a member of the Facebook group, then let us see what you're doing. Um, and if you're not a member of the Facebook group, then um, go, if you want and you want to be, go over and join it. There are a couple of questions it, that is just to keep out. It's not being nosy. It's just to keep out um, the robots and the spam and whatnot. Um, so um, there's that. And what else was I going to say? Um, I think that's about it, really. So um, I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. And um, thank you for watching. And I hope to see you again soon. So take care. Okay, bye-bye.